Hello there, I'm Nafis Alatic and this is Across the Balkans. This week we look at the growing controversy in Montenegro over the construction of a hydroelectric power plant on the river Komarnica. Once completed, the power plant will submerge the country's famed Komarnica Canyon. Environmentalists and local residents protested against the project and have worked to block its construction, saying it will ruin the area's natural beauty. Activists are also calling on the government to spend the $300 million it will cost to build the plant on promoting tourism in the region instead. The state argues the plant will provide jobs, better roads, cheaper electricity and water supplies, but locals don't seem convinced, saying they have heard similar promises before. Mirjana Miladinović went to the Komarnica River to see the situation firsthand. Komarnica springs under Durmitor, a mountain massive in Montenegro that is under UNESCO protection. It flows through a canyon about 600 meters deep and 40 kilometers long, all the way to Piva Lake. Komarnica is special because of its wild and untouched beauty. But the government and a state energy company have decided to sink it and build a hydroelectric plant in its place. And while construction isn't set to begin just yet, it seems only a matter of time if the government has its way. Elektroprivreda je onako, da kažem, na svoju ruku zatražila elaborat da se uradi utjecaj na životnoj sredini. Kažem, to je bilo na svoju ruku, ima određenih uputa u tom elaboratu za koji treba 800 dana da se otplone. In the meantime, locals and environmentalists are determined to stop the project from going ahead. They say the government is unaware of what's at stake and that it should instead invest the money to promote one of Montenegro's most beautiful canyons. A group of kayakers from the area offered to take us on a ride through the Komarnica Canyon. One reason they're going is because for them it might be the last time. We arrived at the location where a group of kayakers who are part of the Save the Komarnica movement were waiting for us. Their goal was to show us why they are against this hydroelectric project. The best way, they say, is to know the canyon. As we prepared for a busy day that required an hour's walk to the river with our kids and seven hours of non-stop rowing, we could already see why. Komarnica Canyon is not just a biodiversity hotspot. Jelena fears its destruction will also ruin the harmony between people and nature. Komarnice možemo da nađemo... Bukvalno prašume, reliktne šume, lipe i javora, to su strašno važne šume koje rastu na ovakvim nizinama, ali u plodnim zemljištima koje mogu da imaju nevjerovatne biodiverzitetske vrijednosti i da dostižu nevjerovatne veličine. Tu imamo borove koje štrče iz tijena, tu imamo sipare iz tijena na kojima rastu te endemične, najviše te endemične biljke. Imamo stare populacije ribljih i drugih vodenih vrsta koje su pobjegli iz kanjone pive u kanjon komarnici i tu sada i dalje opstaju. 
imamo stotine vrsta insekata koje su zaštićene, inače većina ovih biljaka i životinja su zaštićene nacionalnim ili nekim evropskim zakonodavstvom. We set off to get to know the canyon. An hour's walk down the mountain under 35 degree heat along the so-called goat path paid off when we reached the cold river. We embarked on a 10 kilometer adventure in the crystal clear Komarnica, which cooled us down with a 7 degree temperature. The kayakers say the water level is low in the summer, which further calls into question the economic viability of the project. The water levels are unstable and um, they haven't clearly said anything about uh, this. Um, the first uh, in investment was about 187 million, uh, but as the time passed, the, the price had grown. Now it is estimated that it's 300 to 350 million euros, but uh, energy consultant experts from the energy sector had said that uh, following the global economic crisis, the prices may rise even up to 600 million euros. And in the best case scenario, she says it would take 12 years for the dam to start producing electricity, while burdening the state under long-term debt. The plan also bothers the locals, who know all too well the damage it can cause. In 1975, three rivers were flooded to build the Piva hydroelectric plant. The entire old town of Plužine was also submerged, and a new town was built on the slopes of the new lake for those who decided to stay. But not many did. Pivski region je veoma malo dobio od izgradnje hidroelektrane Piva a izgubio je najmanje tri rijeke, kanjone, izvore, uključujući i izvore termalne vode i dvije trećine obradivih površina. Moji preci su živjeli na jednoj od luka duž rijeke Pive. Svi su pobjegli neposredno prije nego što je potopljeno, kao i stanovnici starog naselja Plužine, koji je imao sve što treba da ima jedan administrativni centar, bolnicu, opštinu, motel, poštu, školu i tako dalje. Then the authorities and state energy company promised the residents jobs, water and electricity for their homes. 50 years later, it's no different. Vidimo da ni poslije skoro 50 godina ova isti investitor nije ispunio ni dio obaveza koje je prihvatio kao nadoknadu za devastaciju prostora. U 21. vijeku putevi i voda su osnovne stvari o kojima treba država da se brine, a ne želje investitora da manipuliše lokalnim stanovništvom. Ja sam razočaran da je neko mogao još jednom povjerovati u sve ovo, da se uništi ovakva rijeka i kanjon za samo nekoliko procenata crnogorske potrošnje struje. The Komarnica hydroelectric power plant should provide about 4% of Montenegro's total electricity needs. As little as that may sound, the government says they have no time to waste. Mi sad dajemo rokove za neka usaglašavanja od 800 dana. Ja mislim da definitivno moramo nešto proizvoditi, moramo raditi. Tamo je izuzetno lako napraviti tu hidroelektranu, nema problema sa imovinsko-pravnim odnosima i ekspropriacijom. Biće izuzetno bitna. U svo poštovanje ekologije, zaštite životne sredine moramo što prije u tom pravcu ići. Prime Minister Drita Nabazović heads the United Reform Action Party, which is also a member of the European Greens. And activists have been quick to remind him where his true loyalty should lie. Bićemo tu dok ne dobijemo konkretna objećanja da se taj projekt neće graditi. Ja za izgradnju komarnice koja bi išla putem urušavanja životne sredine u jednoj značajnoj mjeri nisam. A u manjoj, u skroz prihvatljivoj mjeri jesam da se oko toga povede stručna razprava. And environmentalists fighting for Komarnica say the project marks not just a violation of nature, but also a breach of trust in more ways than one. We have filed a complaint to the Bern Convention because Komarnica River and the canyon uh, were nominated to be the Emerald Protected Area. Uh, so by building a dam you are 
basically uh, not uh, following the agreement that we signed. Uh, other than that, we have written to European Commission and they have declared that they will not be the ones that will finance this project. Uh, also, uh, Thomas Weiss, uh, uh, head of the Green Parties of Europe, he had written an amend amendment to the European Parliament and the European Parliament adopted this amendment. Uh, our, our key goal is to involve the citizens of Montenegro in preservation for this river. Uh, so we have gathered a lot of citizens and we are now working and having the most hopes uh, in that that the citizens of Montenegro will save this Montenegrin river, that will save their, their river. Nije njima koma ni čortalo doći, no to je Bog onda to ovom je narod i objen kraj. UNESCO recently proposed including Komarnica Canyon in its protected World Heritage List, but the municipality in charge refused it. The canyon is now locked in a tug of war between the will of the residents and that of the government. And until the winner is known, it's uncertain whether it can remain untouched for much longer. Mirjana Miladinović, TRT World, Podgorica, Montenegro. To get more on this story, I'm joined by Pippa Gallup. Uh, she's a Southeast Europe energy advisor at Bankwatch Network. Pippa, great to have you with us. Why is the Komarnica power plant so controversial? The Komarnica is an extremely beautiful canyon in Montenegro. Um, it's not fully explored yet. Uh, it's quite difficult to access and, and it's not fully known what is living there. But what we do know is that it's a protected area already. It's part of the Emerald Network under the Bern Convention. And there are all kinds of rare species that we do know that live there, including Balkan chamois, wolves, bears, crayfish and so on. So the fact that this uh, plot is being pushed ahead without even fully understanding what is living there is, is really controversial. And also um, another issue is for the local people that uh, they are trying to develop this area to become a tourist attraction. And this is starting to take off, whereas building a huge 172 megawatt hydropower plant would simply end these plans. People want to come and see wild nature. They don't want to come and so see people, a So, Pippa, we don't actually plant. know at this point how deep will the power plant impact be on uh, protected natural areas. We don't know everything indeed. I mean, there, the, uh, the reservoir would be 17 kilometers long, so we can be sure that the impact would be very serious. But the, the environmental impact assessment study, which has been released this year, doesn't tell us much. It's more like an advertisement brochure rather than a, rather than a true impact assessment. And the, the company is refusing to carry out a real research of what can be found there because they are just saying, oh, it's too inaccessible, we can't do it. What do you make of Montenegro's uh, energy strategy? Prime Minister Dritan Abazovic pledged so many times to make the country greener. But is this uh, the right strategy for Montenegro? No, we're, it's a complete mystery for us actually why this project is being pushed so hard because actually Montenegro is already heavily dependent on hydropower and it's already having a lot of problems because of the variation in rainfall caused by climate change. So it's already between 40 and 60 percent of the energy mix. So what uh, Montenegro really needs now is more solar and more wind to, to even out this imbalance. And the, the, the common it's a hydro plant wouldn't even really add that much capacity, although it would be very large. It would only uh, actually produce 213 gigawatts every year, which would not be a very massive contribution compared to the size of the project. Uh, mixed messages coming from uh, this government. Do you think they will scale down its plans, uh, given the growing scrutiny it's facing? We certainly hope so. Um, 
And if the procedures would be done properly, we believe that they, they would actually conclude themselves that the project is not acceptable for the environment. Uh, the problem so far is that the, the studies simply haven't been done properly and the evidence is not properly there to be publicly scrutinized. Right, so better wait and see uh, and have more information uh, about this. Does Montenegro even need so much electricity given its relatively small population? And this is not the only power plant in Montenegro that's creating problems for its surrounding. We've seen Pjevlja uh, and the, the quality of the air in that city. Indeed, uh, Montenegro does face a problem now because it needs to, to close down that Plevlia coal plant in the coming years. And so definitely it does need to build some capacity, but that should not be more hydropower as I underlined. It's already quite dependent on this, this rather fluctuating resource. Um, so, so far it has just a very tiny amount of solar energy. And this is, this is something it really has been delaying. There, there's a big plan for, for a plant called Brisk Agora which has been delayed for years. And, and if this was put online and some more wind farms, as well as some energy efficiency measures, the, the problem would basically be, be resolved without having to resort to coal mining. So. Pippa Gallup, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. It's time to look at some other stories making headlines in the region. Bulgaria has expelled 70 Russian diplomats over spying allegations after the country's outgoing Prime Minister Kirill Petkov declared them persona non grata. According to Bulgarian officials, the Russian diplomats were engaged in espionage and hybrid attacks. Russia's foreign ministry said it summoned its Bulgarian ambassador to protest the move. Thousands took to the streets in North Macedonia's capital to protest against a French proposal that aims to unblock Skopje's bid to join the European Union. Last week, Bulgaria's parliament accepted the proposal that could allow the government to lift its veto on the opening of negotiations for the accession of North Macedonia. The deal is intended to overcome a series of tensions between Sofia and Skopje over language, history and the rights of ethnic Bulgarians in North Macedonia. But the country's right-wing opponents reject the proposal, saying it concedes too much to Bulgaria. And Montenegro's Prime Minister Dritan Abazovic paid an official visit to Belgrade, where he met his counterpart Anna Brnabic and the Serbian President Aleksandar Vucic. The leader said the two countries are turning a new page in their bilateral relations, especially during these uncertain times as a result of Russia's attacks on Ukraine. Abazovic said as of July the 1st, all citizens of Montenegro, including MPs, will be able to cross into Serbia without restrictions. Last year in June, Belgrade held back Montenegrin MPs at the Serbian border who had voted in favor of a resolution banning the denial of the Srebrenica genocide. Montenegro's plan, the hydropower plant, isn't the only one seeing pushback from environmentalists. A Chinese state-owned company is moving forward with plans to construct a hydroelectric plant in Bosnia and Herzegovina's southeast, reportedly without the necessary permits. The agreement was signed in Beijing between Republika Srpska authorities and the Chinese company back in 2019. The proposed plant will be located close to the town of Foča, within the Bosnian-Serb entity of Republika Srpska near the Bosnian-Montenegrin border. Activists say studies weren't completed in assessing the plant's potential environmental impact on the Bistrica River. But the project's director said the company has applied for the permits to begin full-scale construction and expects them to be approved next month. China has emerged as one of the biggest investors in the Balkans over the past decade, including in Bosnia. The country became part of the Belt and Road Initiative, a trillion-dollar infrastructure project that will recreate the ancient Silk Road. And studies show that Chinese companies are making great inroads into the Balkans, especially when it comes to infrastructure. According to a 2021 report by the Bulgarian-based Center for the Study of Democracy, there are many loopholes for Chinese companies, such as receiving tax exemptions and the ability to bypass local labor laws. And an investment monitoring group warns that many potential environmental concerns are often overlooked when the proposals are approved.
Let's broaden out the issue with Yahya Muhasilovic from Sarajevo. He's a professor at the International University of Sarajevo and a political analyst who specializes on the Balkans. Yahya, great to have you with us. Uh, what do you think China's endgame is in the Balkans? Well, China is trying to position itself as a global superpower. So in that way, uh, United States is the only rival for China. Uh, in that sense, uh, Balkans plays an important role for Chinese foreign policy. In order for China to become a global superpower, uh, it has to, in a way, conquer Balkans. So it has to be much more present in the Balkans with its politics, with, with its economy, soft powers, so on and so forth. So in that sense, uh, Balkans, Balkans is an important, important region because this region is for at least last 300 years, it is one of the major playgrounds for the geo, geo, geopolitics. So superpowers, all of them who, who, are, who are aspiring to become a superpower have, have to have stronger presence in the Balkans and China has recognized that. And the Balkans as a region is, uh, is, is, is uh, part of the China's Belt and, Belt and Road Initiative, both in its maritime dimension and the, and the land corridor dimension. So in that sense, uh, Balkans is becoming extremely extremely important for the Beijing. Uh, but many Balkan countries have been caught in the middle um, between the EU and US on one side and China on the other. Can this competition be good uh, for the Balkans when it comes to investments? Actually, it could, but uh, it depends again on the Balkan countries, on the particular nation states in this region. Uh, the problem with, with all these Balkan countries is that they are, um, they are very inefficient when it comes to corruption when it comes to state functioning uh, and when it comes to infra infrastructure infrastructure so on and so forth so uh, in that sense if all all the balkan countries could uh, make make a unique arrangement with the beijing when it comes to influence in order you know to just have the money and the infrastructure from the beijing where both sides will have economic wins uh, but on the other hand if it could limit the political influence that the, that the beijing is trying to project in the region in that in that case yes balkan countries could have benefit of, of the investments that are coming from China. Otherwise, I think it's going to be harmful for the region. Uh, last week, uh, G7 nations announced a new infrastructure project to counteract China's uh, BRI. Is this a sign that Western countries are serious about countering Chinese investments and influence in regions like the Balkans? The West is becoming more and more serious when it comes to malign influences, how they are, how they are defining Chinese and the Russian influence in the region, especially after the 2014, and that was speeded up with the, with the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, West is trying to pull things together and tries to regain the region again, because don't forget that for at least one decade, Western countries, particularly European Union and the United States, were not that much interested in this region so this region was 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 forgotten in a way uh, by, by, by the west and they recognized that in that one decade other powers such as russia and china uh, and turkey included as well so they see turkey as a, some kind of outside player in the last few years um, they, they they started projecting their influence in the region and they have their agents in this region as well those politicians who are actually interested to have more russian and chinese influence in the region and the west especially for the last couple of years has recognized that as a serious problem and 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 tries to is trying to create some kind of alternatives for this for these influences that are coming from Beijing and the Moscow. So yes, West West is coming back. Uh, and Yahya, you were mentioning politicians that work closely to China. Uh, definitely Republika Srpska authorities working very closely and are very welcoming to Chinese investments in Bosnia and Herzegovina. But Bosnia is currently uh, going through an internal crisis, political crisis, uh, regarding divisions with Bosnian Serbs who are uh, often calling for the secession, and this creates a lot of problems for the West too. Can uh, projects like the power plant we were mentioning create deeper divisions uh, within Bosnia and Herzegovina? Actually, it is already creating some kind of political divisions because um, generally speaking, Serbs that are living in Bosnia, who are represented by the Serb, and Serb majority entity of Republika Srpska, they are much more interested to have, as a, some kind of alternative, Russian and the Chinese influence as a as a as a countering balance for the for the for the, for the Western influence because uh, they don't generally Banja Luka is not having that close relations with the West, so they are trying to blackmail West by having much more Chinese and the Russian influence. So that geopolitical constellation that we are going through 
has already created political divisions inside Bosnia and Herzegovina, where the Serbian part of the country is much more interested to, to work closely with the Russia and China. On the other hand, Bosniaks, who are the majority of the population in Bosnia, are actually more interested to have cooperation with the West. So yes, uh, Bosnian citizens, all ethnic groups, are actually victims of these geopolitical constellations and the divisions that are going on in the world at the moment. Yeah, yeah, Muhasilovic, thank you so much for being our guest on Across the Balkans. He's a political analyst, specializes on the Balkans and also a professor at the International University of Sarajevo. We'll continue to follow infrastructure projects and investment deals that could have an impact on the region's environment. Thanks for watching this episode of Across the Balkans. From me and the team here in Istanbul, bye-bye for now.